I'm going to talk now about fiber optic intubation. Uh, modern medicine uh, has gotten away from blindly doing things. We use ultrasound guidance to put in nerve blocks, to put in central lines. And likewise, when it comes to intubating, the notion of, of uh, passing things blind, which you, you can do, has sort of fallen out of favor. So I'm going to talk about using the, the fiber optic. And I'm going to show you a few tricks that I've found very handy uh, for uh, placing an endotracheal tube. I don't have the light source hooked up to it because mainly what I just want to show you people is the kind of movements you're going to use, okay? First of all, when would you want to use a fiber optic? Well, anytime you anticipate a difficult intubation. If by history or physical exam the person is difficult to intubate uh, and you feel that direct laryngoscopy simply will not work, then that's the time to consider using a fiber optic. Now, I will tell you right now that in this day and age, so many people solve the problem of difficult intubation with a glide scope. And if you'd go out in the real world, almost everybody uses a glide scope for a difficult intubation. But keep this in mind, the glide scope won't always get it for you. It won't always get it for you, whereas the fiber optic will just about always get it for you, okay? So for those reasons, uh, you want to have a lot of facility in doing a fiber optic intubation. Now this course is being prepared for MICU residents, and a lot of you are pulmonary fellows, and you've done, laryng you've done bronchoscopy extensively. And so you've done the hard part. You've gotten through the cords and gotten down here and taken a look at the various uh, uh, lobes of the lung. So there's not going to be that much new for you. I'm just going to show you a few tricks that I found really useful when it comes to uh, actually intubating someone with a fiber optic. First off, the best thing to do about doing fiber optic is make sure you do enough so that you have facility. The idea is not to wait, 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 let the years pass, let the years pass, let the years pass, and then suddenly say, oh, this guy's difficult, I better do a fiber optic, and think that you're magically going to be great at it. No, you should keep doing fiber optics on a regular basis so that you maintain the skill. Second thing is keep in mind a fiber optic intubation can be done asleep. You can, you can induce the patient and then put the fiber optic in, or you can do it awake. I am a big proponent of intubating awake. If you feel that the patient's airway is difficult and you might have trouble, if you keep the patient awake, remember you have not burned any bridges. As soon as you put them, uh, as soon as you induce or as soon as you give them muscle relaxant, you're starting to burn bridges and you might get in trouble before you know it. And maybe you can't mask them and oh, pretty soon you're in a bad way. So I am a big fan of doing awake intubation. That involves explaining it to the patient, topicalizing well, sedating appropriately, all of these could be our subject of books, and then doing the fiber optic. But again, I'm just our goal here is just to talk about doing the actual fiber optic. Okay, so let's say we've decided to do an awake fiber optic. And I've done all the good things I can do, explaining to the patient, sedating them, topicalizing them, making sure I gave an anti-sialagog. Make sure you give something like glycopyrrole to dry the patient up. You don't want a lot of secretions in the airway. So now it's time to actually do the fiber optic. You have a choice of airways here. I'm going to choose this pink airway, and I'm going to explain the difference between these airways uh, a little bit later. And I'll just show you a few things. So the guy's well, the patient's well topicalized. I place this in the middle, okay? If when you place it, they're still coughing and gagging, then it's time to topicalize them some more. One of the key things about doing a fiber optic is making sure this thing is absolutely in the center. Make sure this is in the center. The idea is if you have this thing off to the side, if you have it uh, tilted like that or like that, when you come out you're going to bump up against the mucosa and you're going to be lost. You want to be able to be right in the center so the idea is you can come straight out and be looking forward right at the vocal cords. So I now put the endotracheal tube through the center of this and again making sure it's absolutely center. This is when it's good to have an assistant lift the jaw. That keeps things nice and firm and right in the middle. I have to anticipate that I might run into secretions or blood and, th and they'll get in my way. Should I attach suction here? Should I attach suction here? No, what I do is I attach oxygen. I attach oxygen so oxygen is blowing in and oxygen will blow out this way so if anything gets in my way, the oxygen will blow it out of the way rather than suction, which would basically go and basically stick the thing up against uh, the end of the fiber optic and uh, block off my view. So I hook up oxygen. Now, 
what's an easy way to get the appropriate oxygen? I'll show you. You just get a non-rib breather. They're, they're, you know, they're everywhere. Snap it off. You then hook this end up to the oxygen, any oxygen, oxygen on the wall. And then you hook this thing right here. Okay? You hook this thing right there, right at the suction port. That way, if I cover this with my finger, that's going to what? It's going to blow oxygen through and blow stuff out of the way. Another thing that oxygen will do, it'll help me with apneic oxygenation. I'm going to be down here in the posterior pharynx. If I can puff in a little bit of oxygen, that'll help me out. Now in we go with the fiber optic. Now here I'm looking at it straight on with my eye. Of course, a lot of times you're going to have a camera on this thing, and this thing will be on a screen. But for right now, I'm going to show you, since I'm interested in you just getting the movements down, I'm going to show you a few tricks that have helped me. Okay? First of all, notice how I line myself up this way. Just like I want the uh, airway in the center, I want me in the center. So that way, there's not a lot of angles and where am I stuff. I take a look, and when I make movements, I make the tiniest little movements here. Tiny, tiny, tiny little movements. The idea is you want this thing just turning up a little or turning down a little. You don't want to go way up like that or way down like that. You'll, you'll get disoriented. Keep in mind, a fiber optic is what? It's a lot of little fine glass, really glass cables, you could say. So if I put this in and I'm wrenching it this way and that and hanging onto it, I'm going to pop some of these little... Uh, cables, these little uh, fiber optic cables, and pretty soon you're not going to be able to see very well. So one of the things I do when I'm doing this is if I turn, watch what I do. I turn my entire body. See how I turn my entire body like this? I turn my entire body so that way I'm not placing any strain on this. I'm not placing any strain on this. If I go, I'm going to be popping these things. So down I go. If I encounter some secretions, psh, 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 see, I'm going to put my finger down here. That's going to blow oxygen through here and blow stuff out of the way. Once I see where I need to go, you have a number of things. So you see the vocal cords. You can, if you want, spray some uh, lidocaine down there and spray through the cords. Or if you've topicalized well enough with perhaps a transtracheal block, then you can just go ahead, go on through. Now, when you go take a look through here, the biggest enemy you have is when you go through and you just see pink. That means you're up against the mucosa. When you just see pink, which is the beginner's mistake that is seen most frequently, you're up against the mucosa. You need to pull back, pull the fiber optic back away from the mucosa, or actually pull the endotracheal tube back so that you get back. What you want to get eventually is kind of a like a cave thing. You're in the posterior pharynx, you can take a look around, you can see your way around, and there, oh, off in the distance, you see the epiglottis. And now you make your way under the epiglottis and through the cords. So once I see the cords and I get through the cords, now you got to get the endotracheal tube in. I mean, it's a great thing that you've done what amounts to the Seldinger technique. You have the fiber optic in the trachea. But now you have to get the tube in. And one of the biggest headaches that happens is you slide down and it gets stuck. It gets stuck. There's a temptation to just ram the thing through, but you don't want to do that. If you get stuck, that means that one edge of the endotracheal tube is bouncing against one of the cords. Just turn it. Turn it 90 degrees and then see if it goes more easily. See how much easier it went? So don't, don't force it. Turn 90 degrees. Slide it in. If it doesn't go, turn it 90 degrees, turn it 90. Just keep turning until the thing eventually goes in. One of the distinct advantages of doing the fiber optic awake, as I mentioned earlier, is that there is, you haven't burned any bridges. So now I've done this awake the whole time the patient was breathing. If it took me a long time, if I put it in the esophagus once, you haven't burned any bridges. So Awake fiber optic is a, to me, is a very safe way to do things when you're in trouble. 
When would you not want to do an awake fiber optic? Well, if the patient cannot cooperate, maybe they have a closed head injury or maybe they're intoxicated. And another reason you would not want to use a, do an awake fiber optic is if you just plain don't have time. I mean, when you don't have time, you don't have time. And, and you know, the kind of leisurely approach, you're, you just don't have the time to do it. So that's the fiber optic. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about which of the different airways you could use. And I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of them. Which airway piece should I use? Well, there's advantages and disadvantages. The distinct advantage to this kind, the white kind you see, is that it's breakaway. Once the intratracheal tube is in, you can just break it away and slide the tube out the side so there's not a lot of manipulation. A real headache with the, this kind of airway is once the tube is in, I have to literally reach in, grab this, and pull this thing out. You can imagine that you could, of course, pull the whole endotracheal tube out when you do it. And it's sort of a pain in the neck. I'm going to tell you that I personally, and again, this is my personal opinion, I personally like this airway more than this airway for two reasons. The first reason is this. Look how far down this thing goes. You can see how far down this would hang in the pharynx. This right here can cause a lot of irritation, a lot of, you know, the patient doesn't like it too much. Maybe you didn't topicalize perfectly. Whereas, look at this. This only goes down to here, but there's no extending one going down to here and really tickling their throat. Just last week, I swear, I'm not making this up, they were having a terrible time with this thing in a patient. I said, let me try this. The patient was fighting, gagging, fighting, gagging. Then I put this thing in and nothing, nothing, no bad response at all. The patient was perfectly fine. So in terms of patient comfort, I like this airway versus this airway. Now, what about actually looking with the fiber optic? Again, I myself find this preferable to this, and I'll show you why. When I'm putting the fiber optic through my endotracheal tube, and I come down with this pink airway, you see how I have a little bit of navigating room here? I tend to see a cave of a posterior pharynx. Let me show you the problem that happens with the white one. Look when I come out how much farther down I am. See how much farther down I am? I'm a lot farther down, and I might have already gone past where the cords are. Now I have to do kind of an impossible back twist and come back up and over, and that's just a real problem, all right? I'm going to show you without the endotracheal tube a second time, because this, this is a point I really emphasize, because I've gone into rooms a lot of times when they're trying to do it with the white thing, and I'm able to get it with the pink thing better. I come out so far down, I might not be able to see. I certainly don't see the cave idea. See how far down I am? With the white one, a lot easier to come out early and sort of look around. See? Now I can really look around and get that notion of like, oh, I'm in a cave. Oh, there's the epiglottis, and then I can go right down through it. So for that reason, I like to use this thing. Now I hasten to add, you can always use this thing and pull it back, and people have had a lot of success with this, but that's just one thing. Now we're going to talk about one more way you can use the fiber optic. I've already talked about you can do it awake, which I like to, I like to do. You can, of course, do it asleep, making sure that in between times you're, you're ventilating. And the final thing I'm going to show you is how you can use a fiber optic through an intubating LMA. And that's kind of the best of both possible worlds, because you put in an LMA, a laryngeal mask airway, and you're able to ventilate through that and buy some time. And then through the LMA you put the fiber optic, and that's a really nice thing. Now you have the intubating LMA in. And now you can either use a special endotracheal tube that they, that they have, or you can use a regular endotracheal tube. And you put the endotracheal tube through here, and then through this you put your fiber optic. And then after that, you do all the other things that I talked about. And you can see, this is just a variant on a theme. We're just, whereas before I had an airway and the endotracheal tube was in it, now I have an intubating LMA. And then through this I can take a look. And really, it's, it's very, very useful. The first time you use an intubating LMA, you'll just be amazed how it pushes all that soft tissue out of the way, which sometimes can give you a vexation. If you have a patient with a lot of redundant soft tissue and you're having a hard time, say, with one of these things, then you put in an intubating LMA and life is really good. Now, the intubating LMA, as you saw, sometimes is a little bit hard to put in. 
you know, I might, you know, this handle makes it, you know, uh, 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 uh. so I'm going to point out one other way that you can use an LMA in conjunction with the fiber optic, and that's use a regular LMA. So a regular LMA, though, you see, has these little things in it. You see, it has these little things that can get in the way. So sometimes what you need to do is cut these out, because remember, you're going to be wanting to put an endotracheal tube through here, right? So you can, with a regular LMA, actually intubate through it. See, I've cut these things out of the way, and now I will be able to get an endotracheal tube through here. So whereas the intubating LMAs can sometimes be a little bit problematic to get in, this thing goes in, tends to go in a lot easier. Boop, and it's in. And then through this, you can place an endotracheal tube and the fiber optic. And it's pretty much the same idea as the intubating LMA. This is in. This gives you a way to ventilate. And then in you go.